Our next speaker, Dr. Sharif Al Said Ayub, Chief Financial Officer at Arab Petroleum Investments Corporation, APICOP, speaking on today's topic is sustainability focused investing. Over to you, Dr. Sharif. Thank you very much, uh, Melvin, and, and uh, many thanks for the invite. And uh, I'm very pleased to be with you today. Um, as many of you know, Epicorp is a multilateral bank. Uh, we are uh, owned by 10 member countries from the MENA region. Uh, we regard ourselves as one of the leaders uh, in a span of 45 years in the energy realm uh, in this region and, and beyond. Um, in my discussion today, and I was very pleased that um, the discussion was actually on sustainability itself. Um, as many of you know, the, the, world, the, the world is undertaking what it uh, has been dubbed as um, energy transition. There has been um, renewed and much more sustained uh, and pronounced focus on uh, matters that relate to the ESG and in particular in the E part, which is climate change. Um, but let me just take a few steps back and just talk about how the global economy is shaping up, uh, just extremely briefly. So what we're seeing right now for us in Epicorp is that the global rebound has, um, in fact, been actually uh, quite uh, healthy over the last uh, few months. Uh, 2021 has been a year of recovery. Uh, there has been obviously ups and downs along the way with the Delta variant as well, but I think all on, uh, uh, by and large, I think the numbers are proving that uh, many things are uh, either close to, to the pre-COVID era or uh, slowly but surely getting, uh, getting there as well. There has obviously been a, a very good demand recovery in oil uh, over, the, over the last uh, few weeks, space, last months, um, uh, whether in terms of supply demand um, uh, equilibrium or actually the, the, the price of um, um, petroleum itself, whether WTI or Brent. Uh, along the same time, uh, we're looking at in terms of performance of energy-focused entities around the world, and we would see that um, energy companies uh, have actually been uh, an outperformer um, over the last year or so, which again makes sense. I think there have been um, significant um, effects on the COVID-19 pandemic on energy-focused entities, whether in North America or Europe. Um, or, um, or actually uh, this region as well, uh, whether listed or unlisted entities. Um, within the MENA region itself, we're seeing the recovery picking up pace. We're seeing more CapEx uh, expenditures uh, being planned, and we have issued our regular report, which is the Epicorp Investment Outlook over the next uh, five years. And in the report, we've shown that there is uh, an increase um, of investments in the MENA region that are projected in the future. But within that, and that relates to the, the topic of sustainability, the, the, the power sector, the power sector itself has, has taken um, a large portion of uh, the investments in this particular region, 40% of which is renewable energy. And that is, that is huge in terms of um, the, the plans in this region as we go into the energy transition realm. Um, but if we go back to the global level, we see that you know, it's, it's kind of a, a supply and demand balance in terms of investments and raising, uh, raising funds. So we're seeing more uh, debt capital market issuances around the world that are green and, and um, ESG friendly. Uh, in this particular region itself, we're seeing the likes of the ISDB, the Islamic Development Bank, uh, Egypt uh, has also issued in green. Um, some corporates such as um, uh, al Futaim in the UAE has also issued in green. And us in Epico for actually contemplating the green issuance uh, as, as early as um, Q4 of this year. So we're seeing more and more movement for this of issuers uh, issuing uh, in green format uh, and in ESG format or social bonds uh, format. And they do this by the fact that they are uh, essentially generating assets within this realm. I can tell you in the case of Epicorp for us, besides the fact that we do believe in the ESG, we've issued our own uh, ESG policy framework, uh, which is one of the more pronounced in the region from an energy focused entity. And we hope that others also follow suit. Um, so we take obviously ESG extremely seriously, but we're following along with that, with our issuance in green bonds. Um, uh, for us, the green space has actually been a rather uh, good thing for us also on the economics realm. It does make economic sense for us to make investments in the green realm. Um, just to give an example, eight, uh, five years ago, we had about $83 million of green investments uh, the end of 2020, uh, that figure stood uh, at uh, very close to uh, almost 550 uh, million US dollars. So a quadruple increase over five years um, in, in the green space. 
this year alone, in the first six months, we have approved 224 million in pure green assets. So I think the trend is unmistakable. The utility sector is becoming a big winner for us, as well as other investors in this region. And within that, as, as we mentioned before, within the power sector, the, the renewable realm um, is actually taking uh, a bigger piece of the pie. And we're seeing some of the speakers talk, talk about this, whether it's solar rooftops, such as Total Energy that mentioned it before. We also own our own company in Dubai, which is Yellow Door Energy that does a similar line of business uh, in Dubai and other countries in the world as well. So we're seeing more and more of this. We expect to see more of this um, in, 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 in the coming period. Wind power is also um, taking uh, greater prominence. We're seeing the wind farms uh, in Al Zafaran and Egypt, um, as well as in Jordan. Uh, we own a, uh, an equity ownership stake in Tafira Power in Jordan that does wind power in southern uh, southern Jordan. So southern Jordan, and we also invested in uh, a series of wind farms in um, on the financing side uh, in Spain. Um, so within that realm, again, I think more and more we're seeing more investments on this. Now, I suspect in the coming period, what's uh, going to be coming online is that. In the energy realm, in the oil and gas, um, as mentioned before, by repeatedly by uh, the colleagues in Saudi Arabia, that they expect to be the last man standing. This region is extremely competitive when it comes to the pricing of um, uh, of uh, generating oil vis-a-vis um, -vis other regions uh, in the U.S. Uh, etc. Uh, this is on the oil part, and the gas part as well. I think you know, obviously very clear. Qatar has an immense comparative advantage when it comes into uh, the cost of um, producing gas itself. But it, so in the coming period, we don't expect that um, there's going to be um, a huge wavering of investments in the oil and gas sector. I think just the comparative region is and the comparative advantage of this region cost wise would, would say otherwise. Uh, but we do expect that as you know, as we get into the you know the agenda of 2050, we see more and more um, of, of renewables and energy mix um, in this um, uh, in this region and and beyond as well. The topic of obviously gas itself is still a question mark. And is it a, a transition fuel? Is it a brown fuel? Um, um, I think the world is going through that with different points of view on uh, either side um, of, of the spectrum. Now, you know the, the session itself the the. It revolves around, as I mentioned, to the organizers, you know, the, the looking at risk and return as well as investments. So I've talked about the investments and the evolution of uh, the post-COVID, or you know, so we're not post yet, but in, uh, in, in hopefully a recovery uh, from the effects of COVID um, in the global environment as well as uh, as well as the region. And we're seeing, as I mentioned before, clear trends on the renewables ESG realm as we go through uh, the energy transition in, uh, in this particular region as well. So I think some of the risks, just to just to highlight some of those, I think um, there's obviously a very clear and, and, and robust plans, whether it's 2030 in, in Saudi or other regions, uh, other countries in this region uh, that are actually quite optimistic. And this is very good news on the green realm, uh, especially renewables and sustainability linked uh, energy production. Um, however, I think um, we just also have to be mindful of you cannot have um, regulation um, too far behind you know, the, the investment realm. So I think more and more I've heard in the topics that have been raised today, the, net, you know, the topics of net metering, the, the regulation that revolves around, for example, um, you know, connecting to the grid, et cetera, et cetera. So I think some of those, you know, I know that a lot of the countries in the region are working on those. Um, but you know the, the, what we're seeing here is that perhaps there needs to be a bit more um, a, a greater emphasis on the regulation front, so that so not to frustrate the investments down the line uh, that are looking to expand um, in Saudi Arabia, in the GCC, in Egypt, in North Africa, as well as in Levant. So I think that is that is one area. Um, the other areas, obviously, there are. Uh, new topics coming online, such as you know blue hydrogen, as well as um, a green hydrogen um, within the concept of storage in general. Um, there is uh, the concept of, of carbon pricing as well. So these are all innovative ideas. Um, we have to examine in terms of what is the role in this region when it comes to the research and development some of, of some of these technologies. Are we just a, a taker of technology and then trying to uh, be a, a best execution or best implementer of the technology. Um, is there any possibility that this region as well can contribute to the research and development for um, yeah, in the realm of any transition, whether it's in the hydrogen front or, or storage in general? 
Um, I think also in the area of CCUS and, and copper pricing as well is something that we need to um, uh, look at the role of this region uh, in terms of contributing um, to the health of the debate that's happening right now around the world uh, on this particular topic. So, but a lot of this, again, is it's, these are not simply looking at the private sector or even public sector investments. I think a lot of those will depend on um, what is the actual policy of the different member countries of Epicorp uh, in this region or non-member countries in the case of Oman or Tunisia, for example, or Morocco, uh, who are looking to expand in this particular space. So again, so what I'm seeing here is that there's a lot of talk and there's actually a lot of action. Egypt has done a joint venture, or is planning a joint venture with Siemens on the hydrogen front, and I think um, also Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, also, uh, Oman is also thinking about ways and means that they can perhaps integrate hydrogen in terms of um, their plans and energy realm. But I, again, I, I'm seeing a lot of plans, but I'm not seeing a lot of, you know, what is the policy debate? What is the position on the government that is communicated rather clearly to the different players in the market um, uh, on that front. Um, in the same time, again, I think looking at the regulation of some of these technologies, um, if they are being thought to be implemented in different countries in the region, I think is something that would be important. Um, going forward, I think, you know, as I tell some of my colleagues, you know, the, the, the topic of energy transition sustainability in general reminds me of the of the dot-com boom in the late 90s, where I think it was the topic of the day and, you know, the, the evolution of the dot-com boom in the 90s, I think um, we are where we are today, speaking in Zoom, one can argue because of, you know, a domino that, you know, that fell into place uh, in the 90s somehow and, and evolved to um, technology being where it is today. So I think from a, from a similar perspective, I think the topic of the, day, of, of the day is energy transition. I think the things that we're doing right now over the, over the last uh, few months, few years, Looking forward and over the next couple of years, um, maybe even the next five years or so, extending into the horizon, I think that will shape, in my opinion, um, um, the human species in, in, the, in the decades to come um, in terms of sustainability on, on this planet and the way that we coexist with the different um, life forms that exist within it. So we all have a role to play. Uh, Apicorp has obviously has been a heavy investor in this area. We are committed to investing. Uh, in, in the, the green and sustainable space, uh, and then helping this region go along the energy transition, not just by investments, but also by policy advocacy. And that will continue in the coming period. So I think that is you know, a few topics that I wanted to share with, uh, with, with you all today in terms of audience. And uh, I'll be uh, extremely happy if there's any uh, questions or queries that, uh, that are related. Thank you, Dr. Sharif. Uh, right now, we... Don't have any questions? Uh, not right now. So, uh, attendees, if you have any questions, please do pass it on to me, and I will get it answered by Dr. Sharif. And uh, see you in Oman sometime, Dr. Sharif. Thank you very much, Melvin. All the best to you. Have a nice day. Bye bye.